Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So, early this morning, I released a video. That princess on your screen, her name is Nikita Noel, but she was popularly known as, well, I had said Jojo this morning, but her mother is confirming that she was called Joanna. Listen to what her mother had to say. And then I'm going to give you the latest update in this investigation. Listen to this. She leave home 10 minutes after 7. And what time was she expected to be back home? From 4.30. That's the latest she ever come. Okay, so when did you realize or thought something had happened? Because I don't see her come home, so I call the driver, because normally she reach home already. So I call the driver. And I call the driver, the driver said, in Japan, a long time. So I kind of find that strange. So I come on the road, me and my mama, we start looking, and we go down by the driver yard. And I ask the rest of the kids, and they say, yes. Because John, I just lick up on my hand and say, tomorrow. So I say, no, something funny. So I come and I ask my lady down the road, you see Joanna pass? She said, no, nobody see Joanna pass. I'm kind of find that very suspicious to nobody see Joanna pass. So I come back up, put on the clothes because I was very dirty. She said, I'm at the station. I'm leaving at the station. My mother didn't search her. So, so when I come around with the police now and showing them the tracks where she would travel from to go home. Go back down the road to speak with the driver. Then I hear that a little boy and her come up. So I'm coming back up now to speak to the little boy. Then I hear loud screaming. So when you come up here, see her. So the people in the community were screaming when they found her? Yeah, my mother. I'm coming around my mother and I see her screaming or something. So you found the little boy that she was walking with? No, I mean, trust me, I never bother go look for the little boy. Because the little boy lives right around there, so. Okay. So normally, if it's one of my wife, I come up, I'm going to reach home first. And okay, so it's a child her age? Child. Okay, okay. Yeah. What type of child was she? Nikita is a nice looking person, trophy. Nikita, my daughter, I walk with the yard. When she goes to school, straight home. When I drive the car off, she comes straight home. So I kind of find it funny. I miss the time catch up after five days. Time they say no something right, and then it's kind of feeling very really bad. And I feel me really know something right. You felt it somehow. You knew something was wrong. Even when in the police station, we said to the police lady, "We need to go because I need to find my daughter." We need this track that she walks. Each day okay, from Joanna going to basic school. I watch her. She walk in this room. So that's about what? Um, eight years. Um, yeah, because she's nine years old now. Okay. And she go basic school. She go in her primary now. Mm -hmm. This is the same room she uses. So you heard that. Well, the latest update is that Joanna's 42-year-old stepfather. He was taken into custody and he was being questioned by the police. The police, they have not said he is a suspect, but if anything changes, we will certainly be updating this story. Sad indeed. Also, you remember that we carried a story about that man on your screen? His name is Kerio Johnson. Kerio was shot and killed by a hoodlum in front of his father's business place that he was now operating. That incident, it took place last week, Thursday, January 26. If you missed that video, I implore you to go back and watch it. There is the thumbnail for that video on your screen. In that video, I told you about a man who was arrested and charged for entering Carrier's house and stealing some money. We have an update on that incident. The man who was arrested and charged is that man on your screen. His name is Calford Brian. Kerio, he had employed Calford as a laborer at his house in the Linstead area of St. Catherine. It is alleged that Calford, 
he used the house keys and entered the house. You remember I told you that Kerio, he told someone that his spouse told him that Calford might have seen where she hid the house keys. But Kerio, he was adamant that it was she who gave Calford the house keys because he was convinced that they were involved in a relationship. Well, it is alleged that Calford, he entered the house and stole 900,000 Jamaican dollars and 4,000 United States dollars in cash. A report was made and Calford, he was arrested and charged by the police. We are told that Calford, he was held with some of the cash. He was charged for simple arsony and he was taken to the court earlier this week. He was remanded in custody until February 17 when his lawyer will be applying for bail for him. The questions that arise here are, is there enough evidence available to try this case? Seeing that the complainant has died, because not because Kerio was killed, that's not the end of the matter. If Kerio had given the police a statement, Calford, he can be tried based on that statement. But the bigger question is, was any of the money stolen from Kerio's house used to pay a hitman to kill him? Stand by. There is a whole lot more to come. Stand by. In this next story, watch this video. So, that empty spot is where an NCB ATM machine used to be. If you look on your screen, it was one of those types of ATM machine that used to be at that spot at the Total Gas Station in Darlistan in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that security officers from Guardsman, they would have loaded the machine yesterday with hundreds of thousands of Jamaican dollars. Well, between last night and early this morning, heavily armed hoodlums, they were armed with rifles and handguns. They went to the gas station and they cut off the grill to the front door. They then removed the glass from the front door. They entered and forcibly removed the NCB ATM machine. We are told that the machine, it was then loaded into a Toyota Voxy and the hoodlums, they made good their escape. We are also being told that earlier today, the ATM machine, it was found. It was found in bushes in a community known as Woodstock in the Darlistan police area. It was mashed up and you don't have to ask. All the cash was missing. <laughs> ah boy. So, let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to do it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. We are now over 156,000 subscribers. Thank you. Enough respect. Now, in the final story for today, I want you to listen carefully to this story. There was a man. His name is Samuel Bennett, but he was popularly known as Jay. In the month of February 2021, Jay was 38 years old. He was not born that month, you know. I'm just telling you that in the month of February, he was already 38 years old. Follow me. Jay, he was what you would call a street hustler. It is said that Jay, he was deported to Jamaica from a foreign country. I'm not sure which of the foreign countries, but it is said that he was deported. Jay had built and lived in a four-bedroom concrete house at Copperwood in the Bickerstead area in the parish of St. James. Remember, I told you that Jay, he was a street hustler. Well, Jay, it is said that he used to ride a bike and transport drugs. He made a lot of money doing this. Are you following me? Ensure that you are following me closely. One of Jay's brother, he was living across the road from where Jay lived. Remember, I told you that Jay, he lived in a four-bedroom house. Well, Jay's brother, he was living in a two-room board house. His brother's name is Moses Bennett and he was two years older than Jay. 
it was being widely rumored in the Copperwood community that Moses, he was jealous of his younger brother, Jay, and he was always talking bad things about him behind his back. On Thursday night, February 18, 2021, about some minutes to 9 o'clock, Jay, he was at a shop in the community near to his home. He left the shop and was heading home when he was attacked by a hoodlum armed with a gun. The hoodlum opened gunfire at Jay, hitting him to the left side of his chest. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape. Jay, he was rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital by residents, but it was too late. He was pronounced D-E-A-D -E on arrival. Shortly after Jay was killed, we are told that one of his nephews who lived in Kingston, he moved into the house. That nephew, we are told that he's lucky to be alive because one night when he was asleep, the bedroom that he was staying in, it was shut up and firebombed. He subsequently moved back to Kingston. Now, Moses Bennett, Jay's brother, who word on the street is that him always a bonfire and his brother, Jay, he moved into the house. We are told that he took over all of Jay's possession and it is said that he would do anything in his powers to keep them. Remember, I told you, you know, that Jay, he was a street hustler. So, being a street hustler, it is fair to say that Jay, he would have had friends in the underworld. Well, some of those friends, they didn't like what they were saying. They were convinced that Moses, he was responsible for the death of Jay. Remember now, Jay, he was killed on February 18, 2021. Almost two years ago. So this month is the anniversary month for the death of Jay. Well, last night, Tuesday, February 1, 2023, about 11 o'clock. Gunshots were heard being fired in the Copperwood district area, but no one bothered to check or call the police. This morning, about 8.30, residents of the area, they saw Moses Bennett, Jay's brother, lying on his back in front of his brother's home that he had now taken over. He was lying in a pool of blood. He was dressed in a blue t-shirt, a pair of blue pants and a pair of grey slippers. The police were called and when they inspected Moses, he had a single gunshot wound to his head. From all indication, Moses died from last night. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, one 9mm pen shell was recovered from the scene. It is suspected that Moses, he was killed as an act of reprisal for the death of his brother, Jay. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe and share. Silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, crime it a mash up Jamaica. Criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Come in.
Dogs, the 